Episode of Progress, Potential, and Possibilities, discussions with fascinating people designing a better tomorrow for all of us. I'm your host, Ira Pastor. Welcome, everybody, again to another episode of our show, bringing you another really fascinating guest today, helping to create a better tomorrow. Uh, today, we have the honor of being joined uh, by Pia Pualaka, who is project manager of the Smart Prison Project, uh, which is under the Criminal Sanctions Agency of the Central Administration Unit. Uh, and this criminal sanctions agency uh, is responsible for enforcement of sentences in Finland, uh, and it operates under the direction of their uh, Ministry of Justice and implements criminal policy uh, defined by the ministry. Uh, Ms. Pulakta has been working uh, for the criminal sanctions agency since 2012, uh, where she originally started as a prison psychologist, uh, and since 2017, uh, she has been working at the Central Administration. First, she worked as a senior specialist responsible for rehabilitative uh, services, including program work, family work, psychological and spiritual services uh, within prisons. In 2018, she was appointed uh, as the project manager for the Smart Prison Project, uh, and her current post includes uh, developing various digital services for rehabilitative purposes, uh, leading the implementation of the Smart Prison System. Uh, by education, Ms. Polaka is a forensic psychologist. Uh, she works also uh, as a, a private psychotherapist and hypnotherapist with degrees from University of Helsinki and, and Abo Academy. Uh, she also has done further studies at Alo University in artificial intelligence and digitalization uh, for the purposes of the current Smart Prison Project. And in recent years, she has also become a, an accomplished author with her uh, uh, book, Narcissist uh, Vankel. Vankilasa translates Narcissist in Prison, just recently coming out. We have a, a lot to talk with her uh, today. Uh, Pia Polaka, thank you so much for taking time to come on the show. Thank you. Thank you for the introduction. I'm honored to be here again. <laughs> Yeah, it's great seeing you uh, definitely again. Uh, you know, a lot's been going on. Um, I would love to start out uh, like we did last time, just by by handing you the floor for a little bit to uh, to, to further introduce you to the, our new audience here. But uh, Pia, if you could take just a little time to, to talk about yourself, a little bit about your background, how you got interested in uh, in psychology and psychotherapy, and a little bit of the early days, uh, that'll be a great way to start off. Okay, so uh, as you started, uh, I studied psychology in the University of Helsinki here in Finland. And when I was studying, we had uh, we had a lecture uh, from a psychologist who was working as a profiler in the Finnish police. And I got a place as a trainee in, in her research team. And that's how I became interested in criminal psychology, forensic psychology. And I did my uh, first uh, graduation work uh, in the topic of profiling uh, criminal behavior, criminals. Uh, then when I uh, got my degree, after some time, I got a place as a, um, we, we call it senior counselor uh, in prisons uh, for social work. And then after that, uh, a place as a prison psychologist, and I, I was the prison psychologist in three different prisons uh, for almost 10 years before I came to work here in the Central Administration Unit. And here I've been working as a senior specialist and latest project manager in the, in the so-called Smart Prison Project, which is about digitalization of prisons. And also in our first uh, 
artificial intelligence AI project, which is going to be a component in our new offender management system to assist uh, analyzing offenders' uh, needs uh, and the suitable services for them during, during their sentence. So this is my uh, short story of how, how it has been so far. <laughs> Excellent, excellent. And, and you know, be, before we get into the uh, the smart prison theme and sort of the history, um, I'd like if you could just say, because the last time we talked, I don't think your book was published at that point, but you could just say a few words about the book and uh, sort of uh, some of the history of sort of your learnings at that point, which sort of, I, I believe, sums up some of the years prior when you were, you know, in this role as, uh, you know, studying uh, prisoner behaviors. Talk a little bit about the book, if you would. Yes, this book was published in 2020. I think it was December, December late, late uh, part of later part of the year. So probably the first time we talked, this book wasn't yet published. It's only published in in Finnish, but I'm trying to get a translation for it in English so that more readers could could um, who are interested, and I know people have been interested. So about the book, it's about it's it's both a personal history of my career as a prison psychologist, and it also belongs to this genre uh, to say true crime, as they say. So uh, there are real life stories of of prisoners and and how I've seen their uh, their lives as a prison psychologist and. Also, since I'm a psychologist, it's also a good introduction to the so-called criminal psychology, what kind of uh, problems, diagnoses prisoners have, what are their backgrounds, and how we can see and understand this phenomena in society. So, uh, and the name narcissists in prison refers to the fact that many, many prisoners have personality disorders, most common being antisocial and narcissistic personality disorder. And that explains their so-called difficult behavior. And I personally believe it's it has a lot to do with the traumatic background and deep wounds in self-image, self-esteem early on. So this is how I understand most prisoners' uh, problematics. Yeah. Excellent. Excellent. We, we will we will look forward to the the book uh, coming out in English. But for everybody listening that can read Finnish, uh, it, it it is there for um, a, a wealth of knowledge uh, of Pia's background. So uh, thank you for that. Um, so so Pia, can can we also take a little time to introduce uh, for those you know especially in, in, in our audience here, which you know a lot of the United States may be unfamiliar with, but if we can go back you know a couple of decades, um, uh, Finland at one point. Uh, had very high rates, uh, I think some of the highest rates of imprisonment uh, throughout Europe, not just the Nordic countries. Um, and it came to a conclusion at some point back then that um, you know, a, a lot of this uh, incarceration didn't do what they wanted it to do. And since reducing crime, it did the opposite. And Finland has really been going through a major uh, push in the other direction now in terms of decarceration and really understanding, as, as you point out, a lot of the psychology behind uh, these crimes. Talk a little bit about the history and, and we'll get into sort of the the Imprisonment Act and so forth uh, in, in follow-up questions. But if you could talk a little bit about that history and introduce the audience to that, that'd be great. Yeah. So if we go a couple of decades back in time, uh, I think one of the major inventions in Finnish prison system was the so-called open prison system. So we understand that uh, if we want to reintegrate prisoners back to the society, we really have to give them a chance for that so that they can do something meaningful during their prison time. And that at least for those who are not so high risk offenders or who have already shown in closed prison that they are ready uh, for, for further rehabilitation, that we give them the opportunity to spend their sentence in, in a more open setting where, where the practices during the day, what prisoners are supposed to do, they're supposed to go to work and study outside prison. 
This uh, helps them much more to reintegrate back and learn the necessary skills for normal life than being in a closed prison. So this was one major important big step in our system. Then I think Finland as a rather small country and with a rather uh, anyway low rate of incarceration compared to many other European countries, we were quite fast in adopting the new the so-called new prison concept, which means more rehabilitation, um, more more uh, integrative activities during the prison sentence and this idea of behavior modification and all the programs uh, in, involved in this, uh, the principles of uh, cognitive psychology for, for behavior change and for uh, affecting risk of reoffending. So this rehabilitative uh, cognitive change model was, was very important and all the program work and the psychological work and also how we assess our prisoners before the sentence so that we know what are the behaviors and the thinking models that we have to target. And then I think the latest uh, uh, new things in the prison concept, we actually call our current prison concept prison as a learning environment for, mm -hmm. for a life without crime. So nowadays, even more, we see the importance that you actually have to study some, some studies, vocational studies, or uh, finish your high school or basic school education during prison time and start to uh, really learn what, what a normal life means in terms of education. But also prison as a learning environment means that you are learning new ways of thinking and behaving. So, so this idea of psychological help and behavior change, uh, change of thinking patterns, uh, all work related to this is still very important. And I think also the so-called trauma-informed uh, model is now important. As I said in the beginning, that we understand more about prisoners' psychological backgrounds, mm -hmm. and social backgrounds. And we have to take into account that we, uh, we have uh, prisoners uh, who are both perpetrators, but in a way they are also victims, uh, victims of what has, has happened to them. We are also more aware that many prisoners have neuropsychological problems. So uh, their way of understanding and behaving differently is also related to this. And this needs a lot of attention to in terms of rehabilitation. And then the latest one that I'm working with is this prison digitalization. So we understand that the services of prison cannot be restricted inside prison only because we cannot provide everything there. So we have to have access to the services of normal society, the practices and the connections and the people we collaborate with. And especially during this COVID time, it became very important that uh, we had digital means of uh, keeping access to outside world services, our collaborators, and also relatives and close ones for, mm. for prisoners because they didn't have face-to-face -face meetings. Also, digital skills are part of a modern uh, society's uh, necessities. So there's uh, a huge risk of digital marginalization uh, with prisoners and, of course, with some other special groups too, but also with prisoners. And if you think about a modern society, any that any things that you have to take care of yourself, social, social, uh, educational, vocational skills, all these require digital skills. If you don't have these skills, you are getting marginalized in many other ways too. too. So there are many reasons why this prison digitalization was actually also a key uh, key theme in, in rehabilitation too. So it's not only providing devices for, for prisoners for no specific reason, but the reasons behind this are the ones that I stated. So it's been really interesting journey and especially during these special times of COVID sure. to lead a project like this.
And, and it's very interesting because, you know, you mentioned uh, you know, creating a learning environment for life without crime. And this is part of sort of the, the Finnish Imprisonment Act. And as you were just talking about um, the, the digitalization, it seems like um, to get where we're going in terms of sm the Smart Prison Project, there's been uh, different uh, steps along the way. There was this um, Imprisonment and Reprimand Imprisonment Act of 2015, uh, which first as you're saying, gave the digital rights in certain areas um, that you know they were allowed to in the first place. And then 2017 to 2018, uh, the prisoner workstation and network uh, environment part of that act. Can you talk a little bit about sort of the stepwise process that was going on then? Uh, and then we'll get into the, uh, the smart prison concept after that. Yeah, it's true that prisoners' so-called digital rights were implemented in our Imprisonment Act and Remand Imprisonment Act in 2015. And the first step was that in 2017, we, pre we provided all prisons and probation offices with the so-called stations depending on the size of the units, laptops, but joint use, and all the laptops have the same services, restricted internet access and possibility for video calls. Some office. So this was the first step, but we soon uh, realized that the needs are higher and that we can also do more in terms of rehabilitation. If we provide uh, personal uh, devices, access directly from the cell, and also design and select what are the most important services and orient prisoners more to find those services. And that's how it became Finland's first smart prison, which is the new women's prison with personal cell device in every cell. And then there's a software inside the device for inside prison communication and management for daily affairs, like putting messages and requests from prisoners to staff, managing your calendar, there's electronic material bank for important uh, forms, papers that you need in prison. And also this restricted internet access online canteen for purchases, um, prisoner account and various websites, online platforms for different uses and office tools and, and video calls and latest also uh, a so-called prisoner email system that in a restricted way you can also keep contact to outside in this way. So and, and the process will continue. We of course want to develop the system further, make it work better for our purposes and uh, extend the model hopefully to all closed prison units so that we can take the full full benefits of it. And, and as part of um, sort of that package, uh, in addition to the the tools like the, the Moodle, which allows study and the chopping and so forth, uh, they all have access to uh, Elements of AI, which is a program that uh, you developed with the University of Helsinki um, and uh, Rector Education, where you can begin within the digital environment to learn about this all important topic of artificial intelligence. Talk a little bit about that relationship. If you will. Yes, we wanted to provide uh, more, more topics uh, for, for education and for studying purposes, because these are one of the most important ones regarding what prisoners need in the outside society. And since we had this digitalization project, and I heard that Helsinki University had opened online, uh, free online course on basics on artificial intelligence, which soon became very popular in Finland, and it was very fast translated into several languages. It's now all over the world, and actually the European Union uh, uses it as a basic course for their officials too. So it was rather easy to open the access for this course also for uh, prisoners. And now it's accessible 
from all joint use workstations in units for all prisoners and in, in probation offices too, and also in the smart prison from the personal device. And actually, the amount of courses has now increased. So they already have three AI courses. There's a basic course. Then there's a course that uh, is more about the practical use of AI, a bit of coding uh, information also involved, basics in that, understanding what is what this is about. And then third is ethics of AI, mm-hmm. because as we know, there are many ethical issues regarding it. So this was a course uh, for, for digital skills, but also to understand modern life, uh, the future. And since these courses are designed for, for any, any kind of student from any kind of background, uh, there's a lot of good, good ways to kind of train you and uh, uh, how to reason and basic mathematics and, and these kind of things. Yes, so I, I wanted to ask you about the article um, that was in Advancing Corrections Journal, uh, November 2021, which you uh, authored. It's entitled Artificial Intelligence in Prisons in 2030, uh, an Exploration on the Future of Artificial Intelligence in Prisons. And, and here you go into much more than the, the educational side of this, that uh, these technologies like the AI and machine learning and so forth uh, have a rather broad possibility uh, to the future of uh, corrections. Could, could you talk a little bit about uh, why you wrote this paper and, and a little bit of the findings? Uh, yeah, I wrote this paper with my colleague, uh, Steven van der Steine, and we actually did a survey to several jurisdictions in, in Europe and in also we got some answers from Asian countries and from North American, from North American area. And we found out that uh, compared to other uh, uh, agencies of society, criminal sanctions, corrections don't yet use this as much as, as we could. So the development is very fast in the society at the moment. Uh, AI, AI is everywhere and uh, many companies are competing to bring new and better AI systems all the time. But maybe in the corrections, we still don't see all the possibilities, but we also have, due to the special nature of corrections, we have a lot of doubts regarding it, a lot of fears. And these ethical questions are especially important because we are dealing with a very, very vulnerable, marginalized part of the society also. So we have to be careful. But in the survey, we found out that actually there's not much uh, AI solutions in use in corrections. There are some exceptions, some countries that are already further ahead. And then we kind of listed that in what kind of um, purposes AI could be used. We find out, found out that, for example, security technique is one area where these solutions can be very uh, effective. Then maybe more uh, controversial question is how to use it in offender management or even in, in the rehabilitation. So can we use it to assess, analyze, orient prisoners somehow? And can we take it as part of some of our practices to make, make rehabilitative practices more effective or maybe more uh, uh, in some ways independent? And this was very interesting. We just wanted to highlight that uh, we cannot avoid this question anymore. We, we have to find uh, ways to bring AI into our field too. We have to take into consideration ethical questions. We have to talk about it uh, not on the individual level, but on the management level of corrections in, co- in countries. And of course, there's a lot of national and international policies already now regarding use of AI. And these policies and recommendations are all the time developing. And actually, Council of Europe is 
also preparing recommendations for the use of artificial intelligence also in corrections. So this development is ongoing and, and we will see in the future what happens. Excellent, excellent. Uh, Pia, uh, the, I'm gonna pronounce this wrong, the Hamin Lina Smart Prison was completed uh, near the end of 2020 and, and a lot of the, um, you know, the technologies uh, in, in 2021. Anything else happening that we should know about in terms of other smart prison facilities or, or other projects under your uh, project management scope at the uh, uh, the central administration unit? Please uh, let us know. Yeah, I think uh, the latest is this AI project I told. So we got a new offender management system in May this year, and the offender, the artificial intelligence component will be implemented in the end of this year. And then we are going to test how it works in the client work. Then another smart prison uh, might be already functional in the end of this year too. So we will extend it to another prison, first testing it in a one prison ward in that prison. And then, of course, we will start to think what would be the third one, uh, or if we can have it. But at the moment, we are looking for the second smart prison. Uh, then uh, there's going to be an organizational change in criminal and actions agencies starting in September. So that means I hope that we will have more uh, collaboration and more direct contact to our prisons in the future and our probation offices too. So um, the develop I hope the development will will be made uh, uh, faster and, and more modern with this new organization. And current themes, important themes, not only in Finland, but also in, in corrections in general, I've already mentioned some of them. So this trauma informed uh, practice practices in prison, neuropsychological problems. Also, the special questions regarding all kinds of minorities in prisons, for example, women inmates, elderly inmates, very young inmates, etc. We know that prisoners' mental health problems are increasing. Uh, we know there's uh, st still a lot of need for substance abuse rehabilitation. A lot of uh, big uh, important questions to solve in the in the near future, and this digitalization theme, of course, that uh, we are we are going towards a more modern society. There are some new risks, like risks of cyber crime, mm. which is increasing. So in many in many ways, in the future, crimes are done in the in the cyber world instead of the, so, so to say, face-to-face -face live world. But these crimes are not less serious, I think, more serious even, even in the, the crimes that you can do in in face-to-face -face life. So, yes, I, I, I see that there's a lot of work to do <laughs> in the future. <laughs> Well, um, you're, you're obviously right in the middle of it all. So you're going to have uh, a busy coming few years, no doubt. Um, it's, it's uh, you know, it's always a fascinating story uh, listening to you tell it. And I'm glad we had a chance to uh, explore it now with this audience. Um, for the, uh, everyone that is going to be listening to this particular episode uh, of our show uh, across the various podcast networks or watching on our YouTube. Uh, again, you've been listening to Pia Polaka, who is the program manager of Smart Prisons Project Criminal Sanctions Agency of uh, Finland's Ministry of Justice Central Administration Unit. Um, if, you, if you read Finnish, pick up a copy of her book, Narcissist Vankilasa, soon to 
hopefully come out in English, narcissist in prison, also pick up her fascinating uh, uh, new paper, Artificial Intelligence in Prisons in 2030, uh, Advancing Corrections Journal in uh, November 2021, which is a great read. Um, P, I, I want to thank you again for taking the time out of your schedule to come talk to us for a little while about these fascinating topics and how you're applying them. Uh, obviously, thank you for everything you're doing on this innovation front. And, and as we say on our show, thank you for helping to create a better tomorrow through everything you're involved in. A really fascinating story. I wish you the best with it. Thank you. Thank you. It was my pleasure. It was good seeing you. Be well. Yeah.